Hello and welcome back. This is the Fourth Star Knits, the knitting podcast where I chat about knitting and other crappy things, books, chit chat, all that good stuff. My name is Heather and I am a not so single mama of three teenage boys. Uh, I live with my fiance and our dog Beckett in Chicagoland, which is also currently known as the frozen tundra. It is extremely cold here and has been for at least a week and a half, which is not typical of our weather here. But um, anyway, before I do the very Midwestern thing of, you know, complaining about the weather, um, yeah, anyway, it's nice to see you guys again. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as the fourth star. You can find me on Instagram as the fourth star knits. I am very behind in all of my social media type things. I have many messages that have not been responded to. Um, yeah, and we will get into why that is the case as we sit and chit chat. So I thought this could be sort of a sit and knit with me type of episode because there is just a lot going on right now. Um, and so I don't have a lot to show for uh, knitting. I just, I haven't really made a lot of progress on stuff. Um, I managed to get out to one knit night this month so far. Um, we do kind of a combination of like virtual knit nights and then um, I went out with one of the ladies just one time. And yeah, that's pretty much the bulk of the knitting that I've done this month. So I just released an episode. I can't even remember now if it was last weekend or the weekend before. Time has ceased to have any meaning in my life, apparently. But that episode was actually recorded a couple weeks before I released it because it took me that long to edit it and put it out in the world because of all the craziness that's going on. So it feels like it's been forever since I've recorded. I was on a really good like pace there for a while, but you know, life happens and you just gotta, just gotta roll with it. So anyway, um, I'll show you what I'm working on. These are my mom's birthday socks and this is the uh, morning coffee pattern, I believe by Kay, the crazy sock lady. I'll put a bar below for this, but yeah. It's coming out really cute and I'm liking it. Um, this pattern repeat is super easy to memorize. It's on the whole of the leg and then of course, you know, the bottom of the foot is just plain stock in it. But yeah, regular old heel flap and gusset for this because I think this is gonna fit my mom's foot a little better than the other types of heels. Um, yeah, it's a really cute, easy pattern and I, I really like how it's knitting up. This yarn is by Whimsy Stitches. Um, I bought this from them on Etsy and this is a sock set in the colorway Paris Pinks. And yeah, not my typical color story, um, but my mom is uh, a little blingy. Um, yeah, she's this, this tiny little like share miniature who's just all about, you know, the glam and the bling. So anyway, these are for her. You can kind of see, hopefully there's some sparkle. You can see it really good on the pink, but like, yeah, really cute. So that's what I'm gonna be working on. If I can remember where I left off in the repeat, I'm terrible with that, guys. Oh my goodness, so. Um, you'll notice this is a little different setup. I'm actually in the same room that I normally knit in. I'm just on the opposite side because I have this huge window there. And so I'm trying to enjoy some of the natural light rather than just having this big old ring light in my face. And also I have a fire going so you guys can enjoy my, um, Actually, pretty dirty, desperately needs to be shoveled out fireplace. <laughs> this is one of the things that made me buy this house. Um, I've always wanted to have like a house with my own fireplace. And this one, you know, it gets, it gets a lot of use. I burn a lot of wood. My parents live on the edge of a big wooded area, not too far away. And my dad is always cutting down trees. So there's always lots of really good hardwood available for burning. So... Anyway, so I'm sitting here with my fire and my knitting and yeah, just trying to be cozy. So yeah, pull up a chair, grab something good to drink, enjoy my dirty fire. <laughs> and let's knit and catch up. I'm gonna drink some kombucha 
It's funny, I like to uh, save one of these for myself. Every week we have a staff meeting and it's via Zoom. Well, it's via Teams, but you know, it's a video meeting. And I always save one of these for the meeting because the meeting tends to be kind of long. Um, and this is like a little treat that I have during that meeting. And every time I, I'm on the meeting having this, it looks like I'm drinking a beer, <laughs> which is, yeah, it is especially like not appropriate because of the nonprofit that I work for. It, but that's, I've gotten text messages from some of my coworkers like, are you drinking a beer in the staff meeting? No, it's kombucha. But this one's my favorite. It's blueberry mint, which sounds like it'd be a weird flavor combination, but it's delicious. Highly recommend it. So since we're Midwesterners over here, first thing I have to talk about is the weather. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, now what are you doing? Oh my gosh. Anyway, so today is Valentine's Day. And this morning when we woke up, the wind chill, which is, so if you live in the Midwest, there's like the temperature that they say it is outside. And then there's the actual temperature that you feel when you walk outside. So the wind chill was 23 degrees below zero. So that's like 50 degrees below freezing, which is like, I mean, I grew up in Minnesota and South Dakota and it gets really, really cold there. We get a lot of snow and you get these like long periods of deep freeze. But here in Illinois, not so much. It's been a while. We had a polar vortex a couple of years ago, but um, it hasn't been like this in a, in, in a minute. So it's been, uh, it's been interesting. There is so much snow on the ground right now. Folks, I can't even tell you. It's I'm looking at my porch right now. There's 18 inches of snow on my back porch. There's at least two feet on top of like my patio furniture from stuff that's like slid off my roof. There's at least 18 inches on the roof because my I have a ranch which is like a one level home. And so the roof is rather flat in most places. So the snow just like sits up there. It's just so much snow everywhere. There's so much snow. So getting around Chicago is a nightmare right now. Um, Cause you know, on a good day, traffic is really crappy and parking is impossible. So when there's any amount of snow on the ground, it is ridiculous. Like, I don't know if you know this, but not every street in Chicago gets a plow. The alleys don't get plowed at all. And the streets only get plowed in the middle, which means the sides of the streets where everybody keeps their cars, either your car gets buried in a literal mountain of snow, or there's just such a huge pile of snow there, unless you're gonna spend four hours digging yourself out a parking spot, which is why if you've been to Chicago, you know people put furniture out in their parking spots because that symbolizes that you have spent the time and the effort to unbury your parking spot and woe to those of you who decide to move that person's furniture out of the parking spot and park there. Very, very bad Chicago etiquette to do that. But anyway, that's why that happens because there's literally nowhere to park because there is just so much snow. So it has been a real challenge to get around to like all of my job sites. I said this before, but in case there's some newbies here, I work for a very large non-for-profit based in Chicago and I have like, I think it's like 3,500 facilities. I work in like um, planning and construction. And uh, yeah, we have like 3,500 facilities in Lake and Cook County. And part of my job is to drive to these facilities and deal with their HVAC issues, which of course, when it's this cold outside, there are a lot of HVAC <laughs> issues. Oh my gosh, pipes bursting and boilers going down and just, oh my gosh, it is, it's just been wild. So it's especially difficult to even get to some of these facilities because a lot of them have parking lots, but a lot of them don't. So sometimes you just kind of like pull up and it's like, I don't even know where to put my car. I'm gonna be driving for an hour just looking for a parking spot. That's the beauty of Chicago right now. This month has been really, really crazy. I think I said, oh, I know I said in my last video, I was talking about how my son who has a chronic illness, kind of things like hit the fan like the first week of January and he landed in the ER. So there's been lots of visits with specialists and, and everything like that to try to get, you know, everything back on track with him. Um, 
And it's just, it's just been a lot. This poor kid is just, you know, he had to be taken out of school for a few weeks because he couldn't be in school. Like it's just been, it's been a handful. And then we had a terrible blizzard like two weeks ago um, where we just got a ton of really wet, heavy, slippery snow. Like it was the kind of storm where you just, you, you don't go out and drive in it. You just hunker down and just wait for it to be over because the plows don't even, go around when it's snowing that hard there's no point because the, the streets are just messed up right behind them so anyway um so my youngest son who and he doesn't mind me sharing this with people in general so I, I don't mind saying this he has um he has a limb difference but he also has issues with bone cysts um we like to say he has structural issues <laughs> so he's got a particularly large bone cyst in his shin and he's broken his leg twice where the cyst is because instead of bone there, there's just this mushy material. And so it's just, it's easy to break the bone that's adjacent to the cyst because structurally it's not very sound. And he hasn't broken it in a while and we haven't done anything to repair the cyst. What they do is they actually scrape it out and fill it with bone from a cadaver. But we don't wanna do that right now because my son is still growing and it's very near his growth plate. So, um, we don't want to interrupt the growth of that leg because, you know, then one leg will be shorter than the other and he'll have back problems and stuff. So we don't want that. So anyway, so we've just been kind of, you know, babying it along. And so this is my 15 year old. He'll be 16 at the end of this year. And so when you think of your average 15 year old, you know, you think of like a freshman in high school, kind of small and skinny. That is not my son. So my, my youngest is like... I think he hit six feet now. He's, I think, 175 pounds. I mean, this kid is huge. He is a grown man in body, okay? So anyway, so the night of this big storm, my structurally deficient child decides that he's gonna take the trash out for his mama in this storm, only he's gonna do it in bare feet. So he walks out into our driveway where the garbage bins are to throw the trash out and slips and falls. Now here's the best part of this. We don't know that he's out there. No idea. Doesn't have his phone on him. Why would he take his cell phone for a 30 second walk out to the garbage cans? So thank God, one of my other sons goes out to the garage. We have a second fridge in the garage because when you have teenagers, one fridge is not enough. So he goes out to the second fridge to get himself a drink or whatever and realizes that his younger brother is laying out in the snow in the driveway with what he thinks is a broken leg. So Jeremiah's out there just screaming. It's windy. I mean, it's a blizzard outside. <laughs> and my baby boy is laying with a broken leg in the middle of it in my driveway. So of course, you know, we go out there and I can't lift him. So my fiance, Abraham, luckily he's a big dude. So he was able to lift him and get him in the car. So here's the other fun part of this. If you call an ambulance in my area, you get taken to the world's worst emergency room. It does not have a pediatric ward. They have no specialists. They definitely don't have pediatric orthopedic surgeons, which is what my youngest son needs. So we load him up in our car and drive 30 minutes to the good hospital with the pediatric emergency room and the pediatric orthopedic surgeons. 30 minutes in this blizzard where there's literally 10 inches of snow on the ground, the wind, the whole nine yards, it was absolutely harrowing. So we get there and he gets looked at right away. Thank goodness, they don't make him wait. The last time we were in an ER, it was like a 14 hour wait. It was really, really terrible. This one wasn't so bad. We were, we waited, not at all. They took us right in, got us in a room, got some x-rays done. So it basically turns out that he didn't break the leg, he broke the cyst, which is weird to say, but he, he somehow the, the integrity of the walls of the cyst was, was damaged, broken. So the bone's not broken, which is good. The cyst is broken and he bruised the bone around the cyst. So, so they put him in a cast, the whole nine yards, loaded him up, brought him home, got him in the house in the middle of a blizzard. <laughs> it is 
been a fun month, you guys. I don't even know. It's like, I guess the universe thought that life was, you know, not crazy enough for me and and was like, you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna throw some fun stuff at you this month and just kind of test your, your fortitude and your ability not to lose your goddamn mind when things don't go right. So anyway, so with all of that going on and all of the ensuing specialist appointments, you know, so then he's gotta go see his regular orthopedic surgeon and whole nine yards. It's just been, it's just been a lot. In the middle of which, of course, my work has been picking up because it's freezing outside. And so there's more need of me at the facilities. I tell you what, so this has not been super conducive to me sitting around and knitting, unfortunately, but things are looking up. You know, my one son with the chronic issues, he has been doing so much better. He feels so much better. So that's great. He's gonna be rejoining school at least half the day starting next week. So thank goodness for that. And then my youngest, he's still got three, three and a half weeks more in the cast and then he can get that off and then we're gonna reassess at that point and see what they wanna do. Um, but yeah, so everything's, everything's, you know, looking up. I have no updates on wedding news, really. Um, we've just kind of come to the conclusion that having a wedding this year is just not feasible. So, um, I'm thinking what's gonna happen is we're just gonna go to the courthouse and get her done and then have a big party next year when everybody can be there. That's what I think is gonna happen. So I, uh, <laughs> this sounds so silly. I did buy myself a white dress on Amazon. It was $36 and it looks okay. <laughs> And I bought like a cute little fur stole to go with it, which I think was also like $30 or something like that. Like I'm going really, really cheap, but you know, I wanna wear a white dress, even if we we do do the courthouse thing. Um, yeah, so I think that's the plan right now. Cause it's, I mean, for us, like, you know, we wanna be married, but also we really wanna have a big party that everybody can, can come to. It's just, it's just too hard this year. And what I don't want to do is plan a wedding and then have things, you know, go sideways with the COVID stuff and then have to cancel and lose deposits and the whole nine yards, you know? Plus, if you live in the United States, it's just cheaper to live if, if you're married, you know? Like I can get on his insurance, we can combine certain household expenses, the taxes are less. I mean, here in the US, they really want you to be married. <laughs> be married and have babies, because that seems to be, well, not the babies aren't cheap, but um, it is, it's just cheaper to live in the world, in the United States anyway, if you're married. It's just the way it is. So we would like to benefit from that if possible. So hopefully all of you are having a wonderful Valentine's Day today and you have at least some way to connect with the people in your life that you love and that love you. We kept it very simple this year. Abraham, my fiance, went out and bought some fancy steaks and a nice bottle of wine and we cooked dinner at home and that was perfect. Bought some chocolate covered strawberries, you know, just some fancy little things. But we've kind of realized now that, you know, we've spent so much time cooking at home and making our own food and, and getting really good at cooking because we practice a lot now that we actually, um, you know, going out to eat is fun when you're out with people. Uh, but since that's not really something that's happening all the time now, it's, you know, going out to eat just to eat good food, like we can make better food at home. I mean, not to brag, but Abraham is a pretty stellar cook. There's like really no reason to go out and eat somebody else's food. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it and like if I wanted a really, really, really good steak, like I would much rather that he cook it than go to a restaurant because he's just really phenomenal in the kitchen. So a couple of the things regarding the podcast that have been on my mind, um, other than the fact that I owe just a ton of people a response to their comments, which I will get to, I promise, just 
not right the second. Um, so I noticed that uh, YouTube has been monetizing my videos for themselves. And they do this by putting little ads on the front of the videos that they benefit from. And this is without me choosing to monetize because I wasn't, I really wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to put ads in my videos. But um, I sort of realized that, you know, YouTube is making money off of my videos anyway. So, you know, I might as well just enable the ads and then hopefully have more control over when they play and all that kind of good stuff, you know? So I did start that process. I actually haven't checked in a few days to see like if it went through. They they do some sort of review of your account or something. I don't really know. I That's one more thing I need to spend some time learning about and researching that I don't have time for right now. But I did enable it. So if you see ads on the videos, that's why. And I will probably make around a dollar per video. <laughs> You have to get a lot of views on videos to make any kind of like substantial money and like consistently a lot of views. Like it's not like an easy thing to make money on YouTube. And I'm obviously not here to make money off of YouTube. It's just, I just kind of got, I kind of got a little pissy when I saw that they had put ads on my videos without my consent. And I mean, I know that they're allowed to do that, right? Because it's YouTube and you sign the terms and conditions and whatever, but still. So yeah, so that's that. The other thing is, so I've almost hit 3,000 subscribers, which is crazy. I can't believe there's 3,000 of you out there who want to regularly engage with this, but thank you. It's pretty exciting. Um, so I will do a giveaway when I hit 3,000 subscribers. I have been collecting some goodies. I've got yarn from Amplifiber Yarns to give away that she had donated. I've got a couple other things too. Um, and... Uh, I found a new yarn store actually by accident. It's in, so I'm in the like Southwest suburbs and there's a suburb in our area called Frankfurt. And I was out that way. I can't remember. I think I was taking my go to a specialist appointment. Um, and anyway, so I was out that way and <laughs> this sounds, this is, this is so lame you guys. So my car's registration sticker is expired. I have a current one. It's in my car. I just haven't taken the time to take a razor blade and scrape off the old ones from the back. And I know if I put this one on top of the other ones, it's gonna get stolen when I'm in the city because that's just what happens. So I really need to clean the plate and fix it so that it can't be really taken off easily because that's the thing that happens here. So I have a sticker, it's not on my car. So I'm driving and I see a cop behind me and I'm like, oh, please, Lord, let there be enough salt on the back of my car that he can't see that my sticker's expired. <laughs> so I do what any other law-abiding citizen would do, and I just find somewhere to pull in so that the cop's not behind me so that he can't look too closely at the back of my car because I really don't feel like getting pulled over. And so I pull into this little shopping mall, and I pull up, and I just park, and I see that I have parked in front of a yarn store. <laughs> it's called Yarn to Die For. It was really cute. And the store was closed, um, but I was like, oh my goodness. So I need, to, I need to go back out there. And I thought it would be fun to try to buy something for the giveaway at that store since um, it's a you know local yarn store to me, sort of local. Anyway, so that's my story of how I found this yarn store. <laughs> I was trying to evade the police. That's why I found the yarn store. I just really need to take a few minutes and put that sticker on the back of my car. It's so silly. But sometimes when you have a lot going on, like little things like that, it just, I don't know. It's just, they feel like an impossible task sometimes. So since I haven't had a whole lot of time to actually work on things or read or do any of the other things that, you know, I normally try to make time for to keep my sanity. I have been working on planning to do those things, which sounds kind of silly, but you know, sometimes it just feels good to put together lists of things that you want to do and you want to accomplish because you know you're going to get to it. It's just right now is not the time for whatever reason. So 
I spent quite a lot of time in bed the other night just kind of browsing through Goodreads and looking at, you know, books that are being released and got pretty excited about a few things. So that's been fun. That's been kind of keeping my sanity in check. And I've also gone through my, my Ravelry to kind of make a list of the projects that I want to start working on. I, I'm, I'm monogamously working on these socks because I do want to finish these for my mom's birthday, which is in the first week of March. Um, so I don't have a whole heck of a lot of time. But once these are done, um, I've got a list of things that I'm going to be casting on. And I also started to plan out my Christmas knitting. So I have some, my plan was to go through my stash and assign some of my stash yarn to Christmas projects so that I can simultaneously build up my gift box and stash bust. This is like super ambitious, I know, but I think I can do it. I have quite a bit of the right kind of yarn for the projects that I wanna do. So I have three patterns picked out for gift knitting. One is the Nordic Cat, which is a DK weight, but I've also been able to do it in worsted with good results. So that's a really good flexible, and it looks like you spent a lot of time on it even though you didn't, so it's a good gift knit. The other one is the World's Simplest Mittens, which I knit some for myself last year, and those were great and easy and cute as can be. And the other one is, um, it's a sock pattern, but it's a sock pattern for worsted weight. And I'm actually wearing a pair of them right now. I won't show them to you because they are dirty, um, but they work really well as like cozy, like slipper socks. And they're a toe up magic loop pattern. And they're just really, really like the construction is just so, so, so simple. And they're really quick. So those are the three patterns that I'm gonna kind of focus on. I started to kind of like write those out and then write down what yarn in my stash I could use for those things. And I've been putting that all in my knitter's planner, which I showed in my last episode. And that's been going pretty well. And that's been keeping me sane. Cause like I said, even though I don't have time to like physically knit on things, I ha you know, I have time while I'm, you know, driving from job site to job site to kind of daydream. And then when I stop, I can jot some notes down and think about, you know, how I wanna plan things out and that's been going well. I also started putting colors together. I really wanna do um, the Jupiter crop. There's a few more color work sweaters that I really wanna do. And I have I have spent some serious time with my, um, that uh, I was gifted a, a one month subscription to Row One, which is, a, it's a yarn club. And she sends you some 10, 10 gram skeins or 10 gram minis and January's was, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the dyer now, 29 Dwarves, 29 Bridges, 29 Bridges, I think. Um, and yeah, so I've been like laying those colors out and really thinking, because normally like for color work, I get really anxious. And the last really, like the, the really good color work sweater that I did, I bought a kit from Beehive Yarn. So she had already put all of the colors together and it turned out beautiful because I'm just not, I feel like I'm not great with color selection a lot of times. And I know part of it is because like, I'm, I'm partially colorblind. Like I can't tell the differences between like, like how, basically it's like how much blue is in something is like really difficult for me to like interpret. So like greens and purples, anything that's got blue in it, like I, oftentimes I think that it has blue in it or it seems more blue to me because the blue is replaced by like gray kind of, so it, it's a whole thing. Basically, I'm bad with colors. We'll just leave it at that. Ooh. And so I, I tend to really like using kits. But anyway, so this whole row one subscript for these little mini schemes of a lot of colors that went really well together. So I've been spending some time planning out my um, the color work sweaters that I wanna do, so. Sorry, I'm starting to think that this is getting almost long enough for the toe. Cause my toes, you know, patterns always say to stop like an inch and a half before you want, you know, the end of the sock to be. 
but I find that my toes tend to be kind of long when I knit them. But I might have to try these on and see. My mom and I have this almost the same size feet. Hers are just, just a little bit smaller than mine. So I'm interested to hear what all of you are planning to knit this year. Like what is your big project that you're excited about or maybe a bunch of little projects that you're excited about. I'm really, really excited to cast on the Frost Fairy Jacket by Judy from the Autumn Acorn podcast. I still need to do that. The thing that's been holding me up, honestly, is winding the yarn, because there's a lot of yarn to wind up. And while I do have a Swift, I don't have a ball winder. Um, so I wind everything by hand because I'm insane, I guess. I, there's not, I just, I like balls of yarn better than I like yarn cakes. But I'm thinking it might be worth it to buy, you know, a ball winder just because I don't want that to be the reason why I don't cast something on, you know, but I just, I don't know. Sometimes I really like the meditative process of winding a ball of yarn, you know, like especially if I'm super stressed out. It's such a mindless activity, but I just haven't like been in a place for it lately. So, and also I just haven't had time. If I do have time to actually work on something, then I want to be like knitting. I don't want to be just winding yarn into balls. So if any of you have a really nice ball winder that you like, can you let me know what that is? I, so I leave my Swift out all the time. It's actually installed over here by my, I have like a half wall by my stairs. So I do like to leave my tools, my knitting stuff just out. It's just part of the decor. Um, so it'd be nice if it was something pretty, um, but I suppose it doesn't have to be. Functionality is probably more important. But again, I just, I like to purchase things that are useful, but also look nice sitting out because like I said, it, it doubles as my decor because I'm not that great at decorating. <laughs> Mostly I just have like, yeah, I don't have a lot of like tchotchkes around. I have a lot of candles because they're useful. They make my place smell good. I have a lot of plants because they're pretty and alive and I have like a whole wall of them. But other than that, my decor is mostly, honestly, it's mostly books and knitting stuff just laying everywhere, baskets of yarn and piles of books. So that's my aesthetic, yarn and books. Speaking about books, since I know a lot of your readers, let's chat about books for a minute. Well, I give my hands a rest. So I finished the Bone Witch trilogy, which just like shattered me at the end. And that's not a spoiler alert. If you read anything about this book anywhere on Goodreads or whatever, everyone universally says the end is, is a little bit heart shattering. It was really, really good. And I talked a lot about those books in my last podcast. So I won't go too much more into what they're about. Um, but if you like YA fantasy and you want something different than the typical Norse, Celtic, mythology-driven kind of witches and wizards type thing. This is a really good departure from that, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, so I finished that, and I started, um, oh, what is it called? The 10,000 Doors of something. I don't know. So I started that, The 10,000 Doors of something or other. I can't even remember. Um, but one of the things that I did today, so I didn't have the kids this weekend. Well, I just basically just yesterday, they all came home early this morning. Um, normally they come home late on Sundays, but they're all home right now. But I did pull together all of the books that I bought last year that I didn't get around to finishing. So, and I kind of sort of put them in order of what I'm going to read. I don't spend a whole lot of time with paper books anymore. You know, I just, my, if I'm, I, I, I listen to a lot of audible books while I'm driving. And then while I'm knitting, I mean, I mean, same thing. I'm listening because my hands are busy. It's not too often nowadays that I just sit with a book. Um, but I did go through a season where just like being curled up in a chair with my dog and a book was like, that's all I wanted to do. So I bought a lot of books and then I haven't finished them. So my goal is to try to finish at least these books um, 
this year and there's not that many on my list of physical books my audible list is an entirely different thing <laughs> but um yeah but the physical books so i'll just show you some of the books this is the one i'm reading right now this is called the starless sea and aside from being a beautiful book again i like to buy things that i can leave around my house that look pretty and this is by erin morgenstern and she wrote the night circus which is one of my very favorite books this is an absolutely fantastic, sucks you in, like completely different sort of world kind of thing. And it's a book, it's a book for book lovers. Also, there's a little bit of knitting in it, which is kind of awesome. Um, yeah, this it's kind of one of those books that I feel was written like specifically for somebody like me. Um, it just has lots of aesthetic elements in it that I really appreciate. Um, like the descriptions of the places that they go are like extremely vibrant, like not verbose, you know, like not like Lord of the Rings, very verbose descriptors of everything that's going on, just really colorful. And yeah, it's just a really interesting book. And this is not your typical like sci-fi or fantasy, but it has elements of that. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this book. This one's definitely gonna get five stars from me. So I'm like, I'm like this far in the book right now. And it's so good. I'm having a hard time finishing it. I This is, and I've said this before, this is what I do because I just have issues. If I really, really love a book, I have a hard time finishing it because I just, I might just not be ready to like leave that world behind yet. So I'll just drag it out for a while. I don't know, does anybody else do that? Am I just the weirdo? I just don't want to leave the world yet. It's just me, I don't know. Anyway, highly recommend this book. The next one I'm gonna read is called The Once and Future King. And I know nothing about this book. I'm not gonna lie. I bought this book because it was on sale at Barnes and Noble back when I could go to bookstores and shop for books. Um, and the reason I purchased this is because Ursula K. Le Guin has a note on here. I have laughed at White's great Arthurian novel and cried over it and loved it all my life. And Ursula, Ursula K. Le Guin has written some of my all time favorite books primarily a book, well, a series called the Earth Sea Quartet, which is some of the best, best fantasy writing probably of all time. Like if you like, if you're a Harry Potter person, a Lord of the Rings person, any of that, and you haven't read the Earth Sea Quartet, I, I don't know what you're doing with yourself. Or even like if you're into the Grishaverse or, you know, Sarah J Maas, like any of any of that kind of stuff. Like if you want to, a lot of like the original kind of like magic systems and tropes and things, you'll recognize a lot of sort of like your favorite elements from like modern series from the Earthsea Quartet. Um, and it's just brilliantly written. Anyway, she also wrote a really, really cute book called Cat Wings, which was one of my favorite books growing up. Um, it's absolutely adorable. It's literally about kittens that have furry wings and it is the best thing ever. And even if you are an adult, I highly recommend it because it is also absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so that's, I figured if Ursula liked it, I'm probably going to like it. So I got that book from last year. This book, I don't know when this came out. This is from the Great Library series. I might have bought this in 2018. This might be old. Hold on, let me look, let me look. Nope, this is 2000, 2019. Wow, so I did buy this like almost two years ago. So this is Sword and Pen. So this is the most recent installment in the Great Library series. And this is a a fantasy series, which is, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I, I just kind of picked it up on a whim. I think I bought the first book like at the airport or something like that, back when I could, you know, travel and stuff. And I read the whole series. The reason why I haven't picked this one up yet is because honestly, it's been so long since I've read the first few books. I don't even know which book this is in the series. I think this is book like five. I have no idea. Um, but I, I just don't even, I don't even remember the names of the characters. <laughs> 
So I think I need to go back and at least read the book that's previous to this one in the series before I try to delve into this because this is a series that does not do a good job of recapping previous you know storylines and stuff so that you can just like catch up it's not like that some series are really good with it this one was not because I remember I had trouble with the last one too speaking of Sarah J Maas I have this book which I picked up last year I'm pretty sure this was a 2020 release do I even know And I splurged on a signed copy because, you know, fantasy nerds. When did this book come out? Where is the page? I hate that when the publishing information is not on the first page where it should be. Right, yep, it's a 2020 release. This one got really mixed reviews. Like some people really like this book. We're all about it. I think just because like if you like Sarah J. Maas, you're going to like everything that she writes. And then some people were like, this was trash. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll We'll see what I like about it and don't like about it but so this is crescent city i think it's it's going to be the house of earth and blood series so but i really liked her other books um the throne of glass series was my favorite i think she also wrote what was that um court of thorn and roses that was the other one right yeah um but and which i haven't read yet but i really really love throne of glass like i've powered through that series. I came into it late, like after all the books were written and I just like blew through it. it was so good. And then on my Audible list, because I was spending time on Goodreads, sorry, had to throw another log on the fire. Is there is there a reason that you don't want to like switch? My rotation lock was off. Good job, Heather. So the book that I'm listening to right now is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex Harrow. And I actually also just bought, because I saw it had fantastic reviews, The Once and Future Witches, which is also by Alex Harrow. So I downloaded that one. So that'll be next. I'm taking a break from the Outlander series. I started the second book and honestly, like, some of the scenes with the violence and some of the steamy scenes are just like, I don't know. I just, I'm just not really into like romance novels. I don't know. And there's like, the steaminess is very like central to their relationship. Like they have a very strong physical connection to each other, the, the two main characters. And I, I get that, I respect that, but I just, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to hear all the nitty gritty details. <laughs> I don't know, like I, you know, I like romance as part of the story, but I, 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 yeah, I just don't want to read descriptors of people's, you know, personal areas and stuff. I don't know. I'm just, that's just not my thing. I'm blushing just talking about it because I, I don't know. I guess that's just how I was raised, whatever. So I'm taking a break from it. I might go back to it. I don't know, we'll see. Um, so the 10,000 Doors of January, the Once and Future Witches. I also downloaded the Priory of the Orange Tree because that got some really good reviews and it sounded really, really different than what I normally read as far as sci-fi. Like it's supposed to be more of like, um, not sci-fi fantasy, like progressive fantasy. I stopped reading the Diviner series. I read the first two books and honestly, I I got bored. Um, the first book was pretty good. It was very creepy. Um, so it was kind of fun to read around Halloween time, but yeah, it just, I don't know. It, it The second book was really slow. They're just spending a lot of time introducing like a billion characters. Like it's kind of like, um, like trying to introduce all of the characters, like all of the X-Men and like, but also getting into all of their backstories, like right out of the gate, like it's just a lot. And like, you know that it's all building up to something, but I don't know, it's just taken forever for me. I have a bunch of Brandon Sanderson books downloaded as well, which I just haven't gotten to, which is sad because the Mistborn series was like one of my favorite favorite fantasy series ever. Brandon Sanderson is an absolute genius. I love his writing. 
So right now I have Elantris and the Steelheart series that I need to get to this year. Shout out alert! Wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> and pause. All right, sorry about that. I'm trying to podcast with teenagers. It's always an adventure. So um, I have in previous years, I like to pre-order books that get really good reviews because I do like to watch quite a bit of booktube and I like to read books that other people are reading. Um, I did that quite a bit in 2018, 2019, 2020, I didn't so much. Um, but this year there's a couple new releases that I'm really looking forward to. Um, but the one I'm really excited about is by, so this is a, a, a debut from an, an author that I've never read before, but it's like gotten some, there's a lot of hype um, and the cover is beautiful. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. So this is called um, The Firekeeper's Daughter, and I'll just show you the cover. Sorry, my ring light's in the background, and my window's in the background. There's just no good way to do Oh, there we go. Kind of, sort of. Okay, anyway, you get the gist. Beautiful cover, right? So I pre-ordered this one on Audible because I'll definitely listen to this, but this is a YA book, um, and it is... Let me just read you the little description. In Firekeeper's Daughter, debut author Angeline Bully crafts a groundbreaking YA thriller about a native teen who must root out the corruption in her community. So she is, the protagonist is um, part of the uh, Ojibwe Nation, which is a North American uh, tribe. Anyway, super excited. Um, a lot of the reviews said that if you read and enjoyed Tommy Orange, which is a book that I read and absolutely loved, if you read that book and liked it, that this is a book for you. So I'm really excited about this one. So like growing up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, there's a lot of Native American reservations out there. There's a lot of different tribal nations that are in and around that area. Um, so that was a culture that I was exposed to quite a bit as a kid. It's funny because like growing up, I lived in areas where there were not a lot of like people of color. Like when I lived in Minnesota, I don't remember ever really being around like brown people basically. Like there, I, I think it was just like the neighborhood and the time and it, it just was what it, we just didn't live in an area where there were people who looked different than me. And then when we moved to Sioux Falls, that was kind of like my first interaction with kids that were not white. And they just, most of them were Native American because again, of just the area where we lived. So anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, but that, but that was kind of like, like Native American culture was just, it's kind of like now where like in certain neighborhoods in Chicago, like there's a lot of like Mexican culture or a lot of Polish culture or whatever. You're just kind of growing up alongside it. Well, for me, it was, Native American culture because of where we lived. So anyway, so I really enjoy books that feature, you know, protagonists that are from different, you know, Native American tribes or tribal nations. Um, anyway, so I'm looking forward to that book. If I really, really love it, I'm definitely gonna buy the hardcover version because again, I love to decorate with books and this book cover is absolutely gorgeous. So really excited about that. If anyone else is planning on reading this book, could you let me know in the comments below? Because I would love to chat with you about how that's going if you are into this book. It's getting released in, I think it's next month. Yeah, it is. It's being released two days after my birthday, March 16th. So that's awesome. Very excited about that. So I guess that's like a little birthday present to myself, unintentionally. So let me show you all one other thing that I'm working on knitting wise, because I feel like if I, keep showing it on the podcast, I will feel more accountable to finish the shawl. Maybe, I don't know, but let me, I'm so behind on this, you guys, you guys. So this is the Sharon Show shawl by Casapinka. This was a mystery knit along that I never finished because why would I finish anything on time, right? This shawl, is gonna be huge. It's not even done. I think I still have like eight more sections to do. I don't know why I can't just finish this, you guys. I really don't. I mean, I know I need to finish the socks, but like this shouldn't be that big of a deal. I was catching up with um, um, knitting traditions and Arctic crafts 
podcast and both of those ladies Inga and Benta like maybe it's just a Norwegian lady thing but like these ladies just fly through their projects like I feel like every time I see a podcast by Benta from Arctic Craft she's wearing a new sweater and not just like you know like not like what I'm wearing the Felix pullover which has like it's basically stockinette like these are sweaters that have like stuff you know same with Inga. It's like she's wearing like this incredibly complicated like color work sweater. Like every time I look at her, she's wearing a brand new sweater that she knit like the day before. <laughs> I am not that knitter. I'm sort of at peace with that. Sometimes not so much. But anyway, where was I going with that? I need to finish the shawl. Here has been my big struggle with the shawl. The shawl, y'all. Every section, I'm learning a new stitch pattern. I don't know what these sections are supposed to look like. So I don't know if I'm doing them right or not. <laughs> Maybe that's part of the mystery of the shawl. I don't know. But like this section here, I'm pretty sure I repeated the same section twice, just in different colors. Not sure how that happened. This one here is all uneven because I lost count with the lace. That's great. This one is just a, is completely baffling. I have no idea if I'm doing this right. It's just a bunch of what feels like very random yarn overs. I'm sure they're not random, but I don't know. And she also like kind of tells you like what the name of the stitch is if there is one, but a lot of them I think are just ones that she's created. And so they have names like, you know, Janet from IT's stupid Le Saber car seat covers or something like that. And I'm just like, I don't know what that's supposed to look like. <laughs> so I think what I've learned about myself is that maybe mystery knit alongs like this are not for me. Like this was very stressful for me to knit. So anyway. That's my share and show shawl story for you all. I'm sure you were super excited about that. I gotta say, it smells wonderful in here. Like I associate this smell with winter for sure. So it smells very wintry. I'm happy with that. Well, anywho, that's about all I got. I hope you enjoyed this little chit chat session. I will be back with a regular episode hopefully in a couple of weeks, barring any more of the universe deciding to see how much I can handle type situations. But yeah, I'm gonna finish these and cast on some new projects and hopefully have some new things to show you and to talk about. But thanks for stopping by and thanks for knitting with me for a little bit. It's good to be sort of back in with the community now, I'm trying to re-engage a little bit. It's very isolating to be in the middle of sort of a crisis and you kind of, especially now when like people can't, you know, really like physically be there for you. It's very isolating. So it's nice to be back around people, even if it's just digitally. So anyway, hope you all are doing well and staying warm. Especially those of you in the Midwest with me, I hope you are staying unburied with all the snow. And hopefully, hopefully it's gonna start warming up next week for all of us and some of the stuff will melt off so we can move around again. Anyway, so yeah, thanks again. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Yeah.